Hey everyone, Trev here with The Dark Room. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking all things medium format, going over the three main types of medium format cameras. And I know many of you will mention folding cameras, or view cameras like this one right here, which is a great option, but I'm not gonna be talking about these. I'll cover that in a different video. I'm mainly gonna be talking about the most popular types, and that's a TLR, an SLR, and a rangefinder. Starting off with a TLR, which stands for Twin Lens Reflex, and that's because it has two lenses. The top lens is what you see through, focus with, and compose with. So whatever you see, it'll be projected onto this ground glass right here, and that's because these are waist level view cameras like this. So you will look through the waist level and you will focus like this, and then once you have your settings correct, which are typically done right here on the top of the lens, once you're ready to take a photo, the bottom lens is what takes the photo. And so some of the pros about this camera is that one, it has a leaf shutter in here. And a leaf shutter is very quiet and it also allows for slower handheld exposures. So I will often shoot at a, around a 15th of a second with TLRs and I rarely have an issue as long as I'm holding really steady and my subject is not moving. This camera is also great for uh, candids because it's pretty incognito because you can kind of hold it down like this and look into it instead of having it up at your face. I personally like to take portraits, more environmental portraits with this type of uh, camera and then more street photography. It is a square format. Pretty much all uh, twin lens reflex cameras are gonna be square format, which with a 120 roll of film, is gonna give you 12 frames per roll. Some more advantages is that it's a relatively compact camera. It doesn't have any lenses that are protruding out, so it packs really well. It's a, they're pretty much all mechanical cameras. This is a Yashica Mat 124G, and it's, it will function pretty much just like any other. And I would say the biggest advantage advantage of this, this type of camera is that they're usually the cheapest to get into. You can get a Yashica A or a Yashica D or a Rolly Cord uh, or a Minolta. There are a lot of different types for around $100 or less, and they're going to perform just as well pretty much as this camera. The only difference between, like, say, this one and, say, a Rolly Flex, a Rolly Flex can give you a 2.8 aperture, but honestly, I rarely shoot at the widest 2.8 aperture because this has a max shutter speed of a 500th, which is common with most of these cameras. If you're taking photos in daylight, you're pretty much always gonna be around F8 or higher. These cameras are typically really reliable and pretty easy to fix because they're all mechanical. Depending on the type of photography that you plan to use with this, uh, since it is a waist level viewfinder, some of them, like a Rolly Flex, you can get a prism put on it, but for the most part, these cameras are gonna be waist level viewfinder, which means that you're taking photos from a much lower angle. So if you're shorter and you like taking portraits or say you're photographing someone really tall, you're gonna have a really low angle, which oftentimes can look good on subjects because it's medium format, but keep that in mind. That's oftentimes why when I take photos, with a twin lens reflex that I often have my subject sit down or kneel down and I get creative with the posing so I can take photos of them more straight on rather than looking up because I'm not that tall, I'm around 5'7". Some other things to keep in mind with this camera system is that most of them will not have a meter. This one does, but for the most part, they don't have meter, so you're gonna have to have an external meter. And then the other thing is, is since they don't have a prism, it's a ground glass, your image is gonna be flipped. So whatever you see in here will be backwards, but you usually adapt to that pretty quickly. Okay, so next is an SLR. And the SLR is probably arguably my favorite type. It's At the very least, it's the most versatile type. Unlike the others, you see through the actual lens that you are taking a photo with. So when it comes to composing, seeing obstructions, flare and light, and stuff in the foreground, gives you a lot more control. Also, unlike a TLR, you're typically stuck with whatever lens is on that camera. SLRs, you can have a lot more removable lens options. They often allow you to focus much closer when it comes to macro, and there's a lot more versatility with that. And like the TLR, this one does have a waist level viewfinder, which is pretty cool. So you can take photos still with a lot of them with a waist level viewfinder. Some major advantages other than seeing through the lens is uh, you typically get a faster shutter speed. This one has a 1,000, so it's a one stop faster than a lot of 
the twin lens reflexes, which are typically around a 500th, sometimes a 250th. I really like SLRs and this Pentax 67 for portraits, and it's a six by seven, so it's gonna give you 10 frames per 120 roll, which is not that much, but with these type of cameras and in general with uh, medium format, it's more about quality over quantity. You're gonna get a really big, great negative with this camera. But there are some fallbacks to SLRs. One, you typically have to take photos handheld at a 60th or higher. Anything below a 60th, especially with the Pentax 6.7, you might deal with camera shake. Another thing, is that these cameras can be relatively loud, especially the Pentax 6.7, here you go. Has a very loud shutter, so it's much louder than pretty much any twin lens reflex I've ever shot with, as well as a rangefinder. Another thing is you're gonna have a slower flash sync. So if you like taking photos with a flash, you're gonna be limited to whatever the flash sync is on your camera, which is typically around the 60th. It just varies on the camera compared to a TLR, which has a leaf shutter allowing you to sync at any shutter speed. And then last but not least, these cameras are very large for the most part. As you can see, this is a very big camera, but one of the advantages is that you can still get uh, SLRs for relatively cheap. This camera, it's not necessarily cheap, but it's much more affordable than say a Mamiya 7, which is a rangefinder, but you could also go to 645, like uh, the Mamiya 645s or the Veronica, there are a lot of different options, and those are relatively affordable, and they'll give you anywhere from 15 to 16 frames per 120 roll, depending on uh, which camera it is. Okay, so last but not least, the rangefinder. Rangefinders are typically going to be the most expensive type of medium format cameras, and that's because there's for the most part, less of them. Um, but they're gonna be really good. Rangefinders have a lot of benefits. This is a Mamiya 7, and this has interchangeable lenses. And one of the things that's really good about this lens, this camera in general is that it's very quiet. Just like most rangefinders, it's very quiet. It also has a, a leaf shutter inside the lens. Uh, so that means that it's quiet and also will allow you to take photos at slower handheld shutter speeds. This camera is great for uh, landscapes and street photography, a lot of things, but I will say for portraiture, it's not my favorite, uh, especially if I'm getting up close. I would much rather prefer an SLR, which allows me to see through the lens, because with the rangefinder, you're not seeing through the lens. You're seeing through this viewfinder right here and focusing with the rangefinder. So you're not gonna see obstructions uh, like lens flare and stuff like that. But there are, again, a lot of advantages with a camera like this. One, you can sync at any shutter speed with a flash, which is really nice, as long as it's a leaf shutter, which most of these cameras are. And then the other thing that's really nice about them is that they're incredibly sharp. Um, but for the most part, you're very rarely gonna have a fast aperture for these cameras. The fastest this one goes is F4 compared to the Pentax 6.7 and a lot of the SLRs, they have a 2.8 or even a 2.4 and some are even faster than that. So if you want faster aperture, if you're more in the portraits and you want more lens options, these don't have as many lens options a SLR will be more for you than this camera. But when it comes to affordability, a Mamiya 7 and even a Mamiya 6, they're all pretty expensive. They are really good, but also pretty expensive. And rangefinders, like I said, there's less cheap options, but the cheapest way to get into it would be a one of these older Fuji Professional 6x9. This is the GW 6x9. Um, they make a 6x7, a 6x8, and a 6x9. A 6x7 will give you 10, a 6x8 will give you 9 frames, and a 6x9 will give you only 8 frames per 120 roll, but the negatives are massive and they give you a bunch of detail. One of the downfalls of, even though this camera is very affordable and cheap and still has a pretty quiet shutter, but one of the downfalls of this one is that it has a fixed lens. So if you get one of the more affordable versions of a rangefinder, just know that it might have a fixed lens. So those are the three main types of medium format cameras. They all have their strengths. They all have their pros and their cons. We'd love to hear which type you prefer. Let me know if I missed anything, if you have any uh, insight on what you think is best, what your favorite cameras are. And if you have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments below or send us a message. I would love to help.